the artist Thomas Gainsborough married Margaret Burr in London on 15th July 1746. Thomas was 19 years old and Margaret was perhaps 18. She was the illegitimate daughter of the third Duke of Beaufort and was almost certainly already pregnant. Perhaps because of this, or Margaret's illegitimacy, or both, the marriage took place at the private chapel in Mayfair of the Reverend Alexander Keith, who was notorious for performing clandestine but perfectly legal marriages. Margaret's father, who had died the year before, had settled £200 a year upon her through the Beaufort estate, which was a useful sum of money for a young and still struggling artist, but whatever the circumstances of the marriage, Thomas and Margaret loved each other, and their family circle was a close and affectionate one. The Gainsborough's first child, the child Margaret was pregnant with when she married Thomas, was born in late 1746 and christened Mary, but she died before she was 18 months old. Her father showed her nestled between himself and his wife in a family group that must have been painted in early 1748, shortly before Mary died. The painting was left unfinished. The Gainsboroughs went on to have two more children, Mary, born in early 1750, and Margaret, born in the summer of 1751. Thomas and Margaret were loving and protective parents, and Thomas painted many portraits of his daughters as they grew up. They are filled with a father's feelings for his children, affection, pride, and anxiety. In 1756, the Gainsboroughs were living in Ipswich, having returned to Thomas's hometown of Sudbury in 1748 before moving to Ipswich in 1751, in the hope that the larger size of the town and its more developed cultural life would produce a better market for his work. Three years later, and for the same reason, he would move on to Bath. But in about 1756, while still living in Ipswich with his family, Gainsborough painted this double portrait of Mary and Margaret, the painter's daughters chasing a butterfly. This was not a commission, but was a private work, painted for the artist and his family. In these personal works, Gainsborough was able to experiment and paint with freedom, following his natural talent for exploring light, colour and movement to produce an image filled with spontaneity and sincerity of feeling. The painting shows Margaret on the left, who would have been about five years old at the time the picture was painted, and her older sister Mary on the right, between six and seven years old. The two are in a landscape setting, with rough ground and foliage around them, under a rather turbulent sky. On the left edge of the picture, a butterfly has alighted on the top of a thistle. The eyes of both girls are on the butterfly, and Margaret reaches forward to try and catch it in her right hand, while Mary, whose own right hand is holding firmly onto her sister's left hand, seems to be pulling away or trying to hold Margaret back, as if, while the younger sister symbolises eagerness, she, the elder sister, represents caution. The landscape background and the sky are both dark, and the ground on which the girls stand is also dark in tone. The only light areas of the canvas, standing out brightly against the darkness, are the faces and figures of the two girls, and the butterfly, which draws their eyes and ours like a point of light in a dark space. The girls' figures in their light clothing glow against the sombre and shadowed background, seeming to flicker above the ground in an echo of the butterfly's light staccato movements. The shapes of the girls' dresses resemble the shape of a butterfly with outspread wings, with their linked hands at the centre of the butterfly's body, and in their colours too they resemble the wings of the butterfly. The horizontal centre-line of the painting passes through the two girls' waists. Even though Margaret is smaller than Mary, her figure is raised slightly compared to that of her sister, so that their waists are at the same level, suggesting emotional closeness and an equality of partnership in their activities, despite the difference in their ages. 
The vertical center line of the canvas passes along the left side of Margaret's body. The angle at which she is moving as she reaches for the butterfly makes her lean forwards and outwards, while her sister's body is tilted backwards and in the opposite direction. This pulling in different directions creates a sense of tension and movement. The figures are placed asymmetrically on the canvas, with the exception of Margaret's outstretched right arm and her lower leg and foot, the girl's figures are confined to the right two-thirds of the canvas, while the focus of the picture is with Margaret's hand and the butterfly, itself one-third of the canvas height from the top of the picture on the extreme left. It is here that the viewer's gaze in turn is drawn. A zigzag line can be traced across the canvas, from the butterfly through Margaret's outstretched arm, the two girls' arms and linked hands, and Mary's raised hand and flung back apron, creating an additional sense of movement, with energy unfolding from right to left to find a focus in Margaret's outreaching hand and spread fingers. Much of the feeling of freedom and spontaneity in the painting comes from Gainsborough's brushwork. The paint is applied with rapidity and a lack of constraint, and parts of the picture are little more than sketched in, or seem to have been left deliberately unfinished. The girls' faces are carefully modelled, strongly lit from the front, with a smooth finish to the skin and finely brushed highlights bringing out the play of light on their hair and the glints in their expressive, shining eyes. The butterfly, too, is depicted in precise and fine detail, and its species and sex can be identified, a female large white or cabbage white. The plant it has alighted on is also identifiable. It is a marsh thistle, an important source of nectar for pollinators from the early summer. Outside these areas of smooth finish and high definition, the handling of paint is quick and gestural, with loose and expressive brush strokes. Some forms are defined with a very few basic strokes of the brush, while others appear as if left unfinished. Passages of the girls' dresses and shoes and of the landscape background are blocked in with robust strokes or deftly defined with a few calligraphic brush strokes. This enhances the sense of movement and gives the two figures the impression of being in motion against their background, moving from right to left in front of, or even coming towards, a viewer standing in front of the painting. This picture is defined by movement, movement through space and movement through time. It captures a moment of youth, a moment as beautiful and as fugitive as the butterfly. So what meanings does the picture convey? It is a sensitive and loving portrait by a father of his children, an affectionate celebration by a parent who has already lost one child, of his two surviving children, healthy, happy, and full of life. More generally, it can be seen as a representation of the carefree joys of childhood and the loving closeness of two sisters who are making their way through the first years of their lives hand in hand. During the 18th century, childhood was increasingly seen as a state of life in its own right, rather than just a preparatory stage for adulthood. The two girls are represented here not as miniature or incomplete adults, but as autonomous, individual, and fully rounded beings. They are shown experiencing, observing, and interacting with the natural world without adult mediation or the intervention of society's rules and expectations. Their individuality in appearance, behavior, and character is captured, and their distinct impressions are sensitively conveyed. Margaret, wide-eyed and with her mouth slightly open, expresses eagerness and excitement, the unreflective and unmediated enthusiasms of youth, while her sister, whose mouth is closed and whose eyes are wary, conveys caution stopping to think before acting. In a way, this is the contrast between sense in the person of the older Mary and sensibility in the younger Margaret. Ideas of education and development thus underlie the image embodied in the distinct responses and attitudes of the two sisters.
Margaret, entranced by the beauty of a butterfly, reaches out unthinkingly to seize it, as we might try to seize any beautiful thing. But her older sister sees the dangers and holds her back. If she does take hold of the butterfly, she will almost certainly crush it, ruining the very beauty she is trying to take hold of, while if the butterfly flutters out of reach, her hand will close around the plant it was resting on, the spiky thistle, and she will be hurt. The butterfly itself is a complex symbol. It represents the beauty of the natural world, and the benefits of allowing children to explore that world and be educated about its wonders. It suggests the human desire to seek out beauty, to take hold of it before it fades and is lost, while also reminding us that beauty cannot be seized and kept safe from the ravages of time. It represents the transience of childhood, the impossibility of holding on to youth, and the pitfalls and dangers that await children as they progress towards adulthood. The image of the child chasing a butterfly was often used in 18th century sermons, educational literature, and even poems and ballads to teach moral lessons about the dangers of wasting time in idle pursuits, about the fleeting nature of life, the impermanence of pleasure and beauty, the dangers of distraction by the gaudy temptations of the world, about flirtation and inconstancy, about vanity, a vice to which girls and young women were believed to be particularly prone. More positively, it is also a symbol of transformation. Just as the caterpillar transforms itself into a butterfly, so these young girls will transform themselves into women. And in another transformative sense, the butterfly was the symbol of the human soul and of resurrection. Perhaps the butterfly, whose fluttering flight accompanies Mary and Margaret through the dark landscape, represents the first Mary, the sister they never knew, who died before they were born. Perhaps for Gainsborough, this was a painting not of two children, but of three. <laughs>